and we're sort of seeing that now with the exactly. bailout of Bear Stearns. How much can the Iraq war be blamed for the subprime credit crisis and the turmoil on global financial markets right now? Well, I think it plays a great deal of a role. Um, and I guess we would say there are three aspects of this. The first is that, that I described before is how it would, the war has been pressing down on the economy. That made it necessary for the Fed to flood the economy with more liquidity and look more the other way with lax regulation. And so it, in that sense, deepened the problem. Secondly, the high oil prices have uh, helped create this uh, new global balance of economic power, mm -hmm. shifting uh, sources of wealth to the Middle East, uh, so that when the United States icons, Merrill Lynch, Citibank, had a problem, there weren't the pools of liquidity in the United States. They had to turn to the sovereign wealth funds uh, elsewhere. And the third is actually interesting because Ben Bernanke, chairman of the Federal Reserve, who, remember, used to be chairman of President Bush's own Council of Economic Advisors, has said that the deficits have re reduced the room for maneuver. And a large part of the deficit is due to the war. This is the first war in American history that has been 100% financed by deficit financing, 40% uh, by foreigners. And uh, so, uh, in, in, in a sense, uh, it has, uh, with all this deficit, with the huge increase in national debt, it, it's much more difficult for the government to undertake the kinds of actions that it needs to, to combat the serious downturn. In contrast, he himself pointed out, with 2001, is very striking. In 2001, the economy went into a downturn, but Bush had inherited a 2% of GDP surplus from the Clinton administration. Mm. What do you think will happen now? We've, we've got a financial crisis. The Fed is pumping liquidity in. Um, America is still in Iraq. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to the global economy in the next year or two, uh, given we've got these these Not conditions? good. Mm. Not good. Uh, the, the reason, you know, uh, this is not just like an inventory cycle. This is not just a problem over... Uh, accumulation of inventories takes a little while, you get rid of those inventories, the economy starts going. This is at the heart of the American economy, and with globalization, what happens in the American economy affects everyone in the world. Uh, it, in 1989, we had a problem again with our financial system, the SNLs, we bailed them out. Uh, that was just a little fraction of our financial system. Uh, it, it was estimated at the time it was going to cost between 200 and 500 billion dollars, and that gives you uh, a picture of what bailing out a little fraction of our financial system would cost. Now think of a. Now we're talking about right at the center, one of the largest investment banks, uh, Merrill Lynch, Citibank, uh, and who knows what other financial institutions. Uh, I can tell you, I've heard a lot of rumors. I'm not going to mention their names because I don't want to be. <laughs> blame for, for spreading these kinds of rumors, but the last rumor did bear out. Uh, you know, you, one, one, one heard that uh, the days of Bear Stearns were numbered, and uh, those rumors were, were right, right on the money. Uh, so uh, the fact is that when the financial system has problems, people can't get credit, they can't get credit, they can't produce, they can't buy, uh, and the economy goes into a tailspin. Uh, it takes uh, a while often a long while for the for, for, for a, a recovery of the financial system for net worth balance sheets to get re, re, recapitalized uh, and so I think we're going to be looking for a, a period of difficulty for the American economy and therefore for the world economy. Mm. 